In this class, students learn art making tools, composition, terminology, and concepts to apply to real world project based graphic designs made in Adobe Illustrator. We interact in a variety of ways. Through announcements, I can send students important information each week that they get in their emails. In the modules, I send weekly feedback videos that we'll go over later. Email allows me and students to interact with each other. And in real time, we can use a chat room and my virtual office. In forums, students build community, reflect on work, learn collaboratively, and give constructive feedback for in-progress work at defined steps in the creative process for each large-scale creative project. And I'm able to also monitor and give feedback here, too. Let's see. And with the different work that they submit, I can also provide feedback and commentary throughout, and they can also give comments with their work down here. So over here in forums, I usually divide these by weeks. And as you can see, weeks one and two were busy with community building, optional group formation, and we started learning about logos because our first big project was about logo and business card development. So in here, you'll see that the directions are pretty explicit. They give times for forms to be due, links for work students need to read in advance. Basically, they picked out a company to research and figured out how the logo design for that company related to the company's mission statement, target audience, etc. And after they posted, their students, um, students had about a week to reply to appear with a new design as if the company was asking for a redesign for logos. This allowed students to understand concepts relevant for project one. And I also re um, gave some good examples here for students to base their responses on. As shown previously, the course offers a variety of ways for one-way and two-way communication among students and myself. In addition to guidelines for individual assigned tasks already shown, you'll see there's general guidelines in the syllabus for comportment uh, for both students and myself in our interactions. So for students, um, I have it highlighted here, you're seeing that they're expected to ask questions when they're confused, participate in forums and community building activities in a way that is helpful, specific, and honest, and on a regular basis. I also state that vague comments and personal attacks do not receive credit and are not tolerated, and I respond to these, especially in forums um, or uh, through just personal emails back to the students, and usually they're addressed very quickly when this happens. In addition, for myself, I agreed to get feedback right here uh, back to students so um, by noon each Monday I create an overview video posted for the week that kind of tells them what I expect for that week and what to pay attention to feedback is also posted by the Wednesday following their submissions that are due Sunday night and so that allows them to rework into anything that they misunderstood for great improvement and it also gives them time to use what I say in formatting their work that will be due that following Sunday. Also, there's a section on communicating with the instructor and this is basically just asking students to make sure that they ask me questions when they have them and it also says when I'll be available to them. So. I have office hours that are listed at the top of the syllabus. I say I'll be there in the office hours or at appointed times. I also say that I will respond to emails within 24 hours during the week. And on weekends, I reserve a little more time, but I usually get to them just as quickly. Last, I give them a little bit of resource um, for the kind of help that I can't personally provide. So the course is developed around several real-life application projects that the students develop throughout the course of the semester. And this is just in submissions, normally called um, assignments in La Lima. And you'll see I have a project description, the students self-assess, they have example work to look at, and professional examples, and then they also create a reflection. I also have examples of full submissions by several students. 
This is what my project description looks like. It has embedded links in it and kind of a general steps to creating the work and the whole process. We also have the examples embedded here, required content. Um, although the, the actual theme for the project is totally open to the students so they can let their passions drive them. And at the bottom, there's supporting documents they turn in, and these are developed throughout the course of the semester and at determined times where students turn in work in forums and get feedback from each other and myself. Here are examples of Project 1 that students can look at. And here is that example of a student's full submission. So students can actually look and see what other students have done to find out if what they're doing is relevant and fits what I'm asking for. So it just helps clarify the work a little bit. Um, students learn to incorporate feedback and problem solving and the skills learned each week to improve their work as a result of these, this feedback and the long time they have to develop these projects. Um, they are provided resources in multiple media. So like here in my modules, I have lots of videos. So if students prefer videos, they have walkthrough videos, they have an overview that specifically explains what's written. But they also have those visuals and the written um, directions as well. So my outcomes are listed for the course in the syllabus and then for different activities they're listed at the bottom of each weekly module in the assessments table but also in particular directions for the various activities. So we just went over this project one description and there were directions up top, things that were required and then the learning objectives down below. My feedback is related directly to what I'm asking students to do and the most innovative way I give it is in weekly feedback videos that I post each Wednesday after students submit work on Sundays. So this one was done in response to an in-progress business card um, design with their logos on it and what I do is I go through all the work, I grade it, I put comments in the grade book and then I actually put all together my general comments for everyone and bullet point it. For that and then I do other videos sometimes break it down for other activities in the week. So I keep these notes and later I'll put them into um, the announcements as well so students can just read them if they want and I put a link to the video that's also in modules. And then over here after I've done those general feedback I go on in the video to go over individual feedback for each student and I put their work in alphabetical order by last name and so they're allowed to scroll ahead and just look at their own work or watch everyone's feedback, um, whichever they prefer. Um, but that way it's kind of organized and they get one-on-one -on -one instructional, like in-depth feedback from me. Students also, after I turn in final grades for a project or larger assessments, they have a chance to resubmit work by email after they get their feedback because I realize there's a chance for miscommunications. And so they have a week to turn in updated work if they want great improvement. So I'd said previously, everything the student needs for this course is actually in modules, which is the way I intended students to navigate the course. They have instruction in multiple formats, various learning resources from me and outside sources, and my feedback all available here. Lalima is mostly used for turning in content. However, there's a lot of resources for the students outside the course itself and they can find some of this in the syllabus where they have information to get them to the KI office and also the Learn Learning Resource Center. Um, there's also a Learning Resource Center tutor that's available and I've consistently placed one of my previous students in this position so they're uniquely qualified to help my students because they know all my activities, they understand what the students are supposed to learn and they already know the techniques the students need. There's also lab availability in both the LRC and the BS buildings and I send out the information with passwords and um, the times that those rooms are available to students at the beginning of the semester in announcements. Last, in my virtual office, students can use Blackboard Collaborate to chat with me in real time, 
um, to show me images they're working on, to use video and chat with me, but even better than that, they can actually app share. So when they're having problems using Illustrator, they can open their uh, document right in front of me and in real time they can show me what they're doing and I can actually take over their mouse if they let me and and actually show them how to fix their problem. And this happens a lot with beginners because they don't know where to find tools sometimes or if they make a simple mistake they don't know how to undo it.